3.0 Technical Framework for OLCA, here is the content of the video. 3.1 Goal and Scope 3.2 System Boundary 3.3 Life Cycle Inventory Analysis 3.4 Life Cycle Impact Assessment 3.5 Uncertainty 3.1 Goal and Scope In the technical framework for organizational life cycle assessment, the first step is to define the goal and scope by the organization. So, how does the organization start? First, the questioning methods or the method of the 5 W's and 1 H. Such as why, who, and what can help the organization to define the goal and scope. To define the goal, for example, why, why is an OLCA being conducted, the reasons for carrying out the study, who, who will use the results, what, what want to be assessed. For defining the scope, what and how can be used as the keyword by the organization. For example, what, what is going to be analyzed, how, how is going to be analyzed. 3.2 System Boundary According to its goal and scope, an organization can develop its OLCA based on defined system boundaries. The organization shall consider the complete life cycle of its products. This is to cover all inputs and outputs related to the organization's activities, to disclose and justify any exclusion. A complete cradle-to-grave assessment or cradle-to-gate boundary of an organization required to be presented. The cradle-to-grave assessment includes Usage of energy or generation of gas emissions End-of-life treatment Waste disposal On the other hand, the cradle-to-gate boundary can be selected by an organization when products has no influence on the use stage and the end-of-life stage through Recycling campaigns of products sold The recycling of products sold can reduce the acquisition of raw materials According to ISO 14044, system boundaries shall be documented and justified in accordance with the goal and scope of the study. For organizations, system boundaries shall reflect the consolidation approach. The consolidation approaches includes a. Operational control, b. Financial control, c. Equity share. Before going to the last part of this video, let's know more on the consolidation approaches. Control can be defined in either financial or operational terms. Operational control The organization assesses impacts of processes and physical units from facilities over which it has operational control. Financial control The organization assesses impacts of processes and physical units from facilities over which it has financial control. Equity share the organization assesses impacts of processes and physical units from respective facilities according to its share of equity interest. Each consolidation method is suitable for different situations and conditions. Control approaches do not fully re the financial risks and rewards garnered through financial risk management, but have the advantage that they include only those units over which the organization has direct influence. In this way, control approaches facilitate the collection of data and the implementation of potential improvements identified through OLCA. Equity share is more straightforward when an organization's structure is complex. Lastly, the organization shall explain any change to the selected consolidation methodology. Now we come to quiz time. There are questions based on the content mentioned before. Question 1. According to underscore, system boundaries shall be documented and justified in accordance with the goal and scope of the study. A. ISO 14044 B. ISO 14001 C. ISO 27001 You are so smart. The answer is A. Question 2. What are the three consolidation approaches that should be reflected in system boundaries? 
A. Financial control, operational control, and behavior control. B. Financial control, operational control, and equity share. C. Operational control, control review and equity share. Are you ready? The answer is B. Are you correct? Do you all get them right? Here we are. Stay tuned for the next part of the video. Now, let's look at the life cycle inventory analysis. The inventory is the OLC of phase when data is collected and systems are modeled. LCI analysis is defined by ISO as the phase of life cycle assessment involving the compilation and quantification of inputs and outputs for a product throughout its life cycle. For conducting the inventory phases, the iterative steps should be performed when the study goals and the scope definition are done. It is followed by identifying involved activities, prioritizing data collection efforts, selecting the data collection approach, data collection, validation of data, relating data to reporting flow, and lastly, data aggregation. The inventory should include all inputs such as energy, water, material and outputs such as emissions to air, water, soil and solid waste generated. The inputs and outputs are connected with the activities involved, which can be classified as direct and indirect activities. The examples of direct activities are organization vehicles, equipment and facilities, capital equipment, waste generated in operations, employee commuting, transportation are some examples of the indirect upstream activities which include inputs and outputs generated by other upstream activities. For indirect downstream activities, it included the distribution of products to the client, the use or consumption of the provided goods and end-of-life treatment of products sold. In the efforts of prioritizing data collection, organizations can use several methods and criteria to identify priority activities, so they can prioritize data collection efforts on the activities that are expected, to have the most significant environmental impacts which offer the most significant impact reduction opportunities. In terms of quantitative aspects, environmental impacts criteria contribute significantly to the total anticipated resource use and emissions of the reporting organization. The other criteria suggested is mass and energy, which the organization should provide recommended methods for energy or mass flow analysis throughout the value chain. Spending or revenue can be used for identifying the most relevant suppliers and other partners in the value chain of an organization. In organizational aspects, it enables organizations to collect higher quality data for the priority activities by considering Suppliers closeness Influence Risk Stakeholders Outsourcing And sector guidance In the inventory quantification, there are two general types of data can be used which are specific and generic data Specific data refer to directly measured or collected data representative of process or activities at a specific facility or set of facilities. Generic data, also called as secondary data, is not based on direct measurements or calculation for the respective specific process or activity, but rather sourced from a third-party life cycle inventory database or other source. Normally, the whole set of direct and indirect activities within the system boundary of the study should be described using specific data. There are three inventory calculation procedures proposed for quantifying the organization's inventory at the organizational and value chain, which are bottom-up approach, top-down approach, and hybrid approach or intermediate approach. Bottom-up approach or product-oriented approach entails adding the different LCAs of the products of the reporting organization, weighted by the amount of products that are produced during the reference period, together with the supporting activities. Top-down approach considers the reporting organization as a whole, and adds upstream models for all inputs of the organization and downstream models for all outputs hybrid approach or intermediate approach that uses both bottom-up and top-down data could be imagined. When a process, activity or unit delivers several outputs and only one or some of them are included in the study, 
a multifunctionality situation may be faced. So, how can we solve the multifunctionality situations? Firstly, organizations should avoid or minimize allocation and use it only when more accurate data is not available by looking for product level data. When the individual resource use and emissions of the purchased product could be quantified. Second, subdividing the inventory of inputs and outputs by either directly submetering activity data for the outputs involved in the study or using engineering models to separately estimate emissions related to each output. Where the first two options do not apply in the study, allocation may be applied, that is, the inputs and outputs of the system should be partitioned between its different products or functions according to a certain relationship. Relevant underlying physical relationships. The relationship should be relevant either in the sense that it reflects how input flows determine the proportions of output flows, or in terms of how specific characteristics of the input flows relate to the functions provided by the co-products. When physical relationships are not an option, allocation may be applied using economic or other relationships. Data quality is fundamental to ensure the reliability and validity of the findings, in order to reach useful conclusions. Data quality can be verified quantitatively or qualitatively. The organization should collect data based on the requirements that address the seven criteria, which are Temporal representativeness the degree to which the data set reflects actual time and the minimum length of time over which data should be collected. Geographical representativeness. The degree to which the data set reflects actual location. Technological representativeness. The degree to which the data set reflects actual level of technology. Precision. Measure of the variability of the data values for each data expressed. Completeness. Whether or not all the data necessary to conduct the assessment is available. Reproducibility. Qualitative assessment of the extent to which information about the methodology and data values would allow an independent practitioner to reproduce the results reported in the study. It is related with transparency. And last one reliability. The degree to which the approach sources, data collection methods and verification procedures used to obtain the data are dependable. That's all about the life cycle inventory analysis. Now, let's us have a small Q&A session. Which of the following is not the criteria of data quality requirement? A. Temporal representativeness. B. Completeness. C. Precision. D. Risk assessment. Yes, the correct answer is D. Congratulations if your answer is correct. Now I am going to talk about the life cycle impact assessment. The life cycle impact assessment phase of an LCA is the evaluation of potential human health and environmental impacts of the environmental resources and releases identified during the LCI life cycle inventory. Impact assessment should address ecological and human health effects, it should also address resource depletion. A life cycle impact assessment attempts to establish a linkage between the product or processes and its potential environmental impacts. Here are the typical impact categories. Climate change, stratospheric ozone deletion, eutrophication, photochemical smog, acidification, human toxicity, water footprint, Question mark ecotoxicity, water resource depletion, mineral resource depletion, fossil fuel depletion, land use, biodiversity, soil conservation. 3.4.2 After impact assessment, normalization, scoring, and other methods used to clarify data for decision maker based on value judgments, not science. Important to choose these methods to support the decisions you make. For example policy, normalized to national per capita figures. E.G comparisons between products, normalized to average product. For example comparisons between businesses normalized to net sales. E.4.3 quiz. Question, which activity below can reduce the impact of climate change? A. Reduce greenhouse gas emissions. 
B. Increase the emission of greenhouse gases. C. Wearing facial mask every day. D. Consume more meat every day. I will announce the answer after counting to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The answer is A. Did you get it right? For those get the right answer, congratulations. Next, I'm going to talk about life cycle interpretation and uncertainty. So, what is life cycle interpretation? Life cycle interpretation is a systematic technique to identify, quantify, check and evaluate information from the results of the life cycle inventory and slash or the life cycle impact assessment. The results from the inventory analysis and impact assessment are summarized during the interpretation phase. The outcome of the interpretation phase is a set of conclusions and recommendations for the study. About the explanation of life cycle interpretation, includes identification of significant issues based on the results of the LCI. Evaluation of the study. Considering completeness. Sensitivity. Consistency checks. Conclusions. Limitations and recommendations. Besides, in the life cycle interpretation, a large amount of data must be obtained, such as emissions, material consumption, energy consumption, etc. Therefore, errors caused by measurement inevitably exist, which leads to the uncertainty of input data. Next, there is a small question and answer session. Which of the following statements about uncertainty is true? Option A. No need to acquire a large amount of data in the life cycle. Option B. No error in measurement. Option C. The collected data includes material consumption. Option D. All of the above are true. Think it over. Then the answer is option C. Did you get it right?